my name is Adam. I'm the coach of the Title Town Tyrantrums, part of the National Exhibition Syndicate, and I am here again to talk about I, my Week Three match against the Aston Charizards. Um, if you haven't watched the previous matches, I recommend you go and do that first, so that I can tell you more about how we got to one and one without spoiling anything. Um, so going into this week. Um, I had to play the Aston Charizards, who I played in the finals of our test season um, previously and lost to. And so going into this week, I wanted to build the best team possible, and I ended up consulting uh, Crazy Razy and the Swindon Fletchlings organization for help. Um, I built this team beforehand and then asked for suggestions and changes to be made um, in hopes that I could build something to work around my opponent's team. Um, which, if you'd like to know what I had to play, you should see it in a layout below you now. Um, the biggest threats that I saw were things like uh, Mega Sableye and Hydreigon, um, and those are kind of you know my biggest concerns going into it. Um, particularly Mega Sableye, since as it's become more popular, people have started to show how big of a pain in the butt it is to work around. Um, it can definitely set up and sweep you if you aren't able to stop it. And knowing that I could set up specially, um, I actually built two different versions of the team, the other one having Mega Pinsir over Skarmory, and I elected to bring Skarmory thinking that it would be more useful, um, and, you know, spoiler alert, probably not the best choice that I made. Um, but anyways, without any further commentary, let's get into what I brought this week. Uh, the first thing was Jeremy the Neuvern with Choice Scarf and Frisk with Draco Meteor, Flamethrower, Air Slash, and Return. Um, it only has 92 speed, as you can see, because with that much speed investment and a Scarf, it could outspeed everything on my opponent's team, um, even Scarfed, because the fastest thing was Flygon, and so I was able to put the rest in HP. Um, and that was one of the suggestions that I got from uh, Crazy Razy was that, oh, well, you don't need all this speed to outspeed everything, just Scarf it and kick the speed down. Um, so Jeremy the Neuvern came. Uh, the second thing that I brought was Tyler the Slurpuff with Belly Drum, Player Off, Drain Punch, and Facade, um, such as Varian on Burden for the ability and the item. Um, pretty standard set. My idea was that if I happened to get burned by like a Will-O-Wisp or paralyzed by a Thunder Wave, um, then I could Facade later on in the match um, with that boost. Um, basically, Tyler the Slurpuff's job was to go in and hopefully set up and do as much damage as possible, particularly to the Sableye um, with Player Off. Um, the next thing that I brought was Annabelle the Frostlass with Expert Belt and Cursed Body running Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Destiny Bond, and Light Screen. Um, in my previous test season, I was able to defeat a Suicune that was setting up on me by using Destiny Bond on it um, when it had set up and tried to KO me. I believe that Destiny Bond was with my Gardevoir. But going into this match, I knew that if worse came to worse, I was hoping to maybe trick the Sableye into Shadow Balling me on a Destiny Bond or something like that. Um, really, it was my best plan um, for a worst case scenario. And then also Expert Belt, Thunderbolt, and Ice Beam. With, you know, 132 attack isn't the worst, um, especially with a lot of things weak to Ice Beam um, on my opponent's team. The fourth thing that I decided to bring was Kai the Mute with Expert Belt and Heal Belt, Dazzling Gleam, Flamethrower, and Scald. Um, going into this match, um, really I knew that I might have to deal with some statuses from a couple of my opponent's Pokemon, so that's why I decided to bring um, Dazzling Gleam, Flamethrower, and Scald, um, along with Heal Belt. Um, basically, with the, those three coverage moves and Expert Belt and then Heal Belt, I thought that Mew would be the most useful um, that it could be in this match. Um, that's all there is to say on it. 252 plus in speed, just you know, try to hit as hard as possible. Um, next up is Alaric the Skarmory with Stealth Rock Row and Defog and Brave Bird, um, holding the Rocky Helmet with Sturdy. Um, my plan with Skarmory was because it has Sturdy, it can take any one hit from Sableye if it sets up and Whirlwind it out. Um, spoiler alert right now, Whirlwind does not work on Magic Bounce. Probably could have figured that out if I had Googled it, but it was just something I didn't think of. Um, I really only associate Magic Bounce with statuses and hazards, so Whirlwind just doesn't seem like something that should be Magic Bounced. Um, but originally the plan was to Whirlwind the Mega Sableye out, knowing that I could live any one hit that it would do to me. 
And then if I had known that Whirlwind would have failed, I would have had a different Milotic set. I obviously probably would have run Dragon Tail instead. Uh, but in this case, I was running Ice Beam, Scald, Recover, and Toxic, again, on Elena the Milotic. Um, don't need too much explanation on this set. It's my pretty standard Milotic set that I like to bring. Um, very useful. I can't really knock it when it works. Um, so this is the six Pokemon that I decided to bring. Um, not too shabby. This team is a little bit unorthodox for me. I was running three Pokemon that I'm still not really comfortable using in Frostlass, Slurpuff, and Skarmory. Um, so when I look at this team, it's not the typical team that I think that I would have normally built, but I really think that when I went into this match, I had built really one of the best teams that I could to face what my opponent could possibly bring. Um, really all I can say is that before we watched the match, I was really, really proud of this team. Um, I thought that the team composition worked extremely well, and minus maybe the one error of either not bringing Pinsir or not bringing Dragon Tail. Um, before we watched the match, I think that this team really was a home run as far as um, team composition goes. Unfortunately, despite how proud I was of my team and how confident I sort of felt about how I had built it going into this match, um, you know what, let's just watch. So my opponent decided to bring uh, Azumarill, Ferrothorn, Metagross, Mega Sableye, Rotom, and Rhydon. And I decided to bring, of course, Noivern, Slurpuff, Frostlass, Mew, Skarmory, and my Lotic. Um, let's, let's just go. So initially with Ferrothorn, this time, unlike the previous season when I didn't pack Flamethrower for Ferrothorn, I made sure that I had Flamethrower on my Noivern because I lost a game last season for not having Flamethrower on Noivern for Ferrothorn. And I figured that uh, knowing Danny and knowing the team that he had, his safest leap was Ferrothorn. Nothing on my team was probably going to, you know, oko it. Except maybe, like, Expert Belt Mew. I haven't done the exact helps. Um, but I was going to lead with Noivern. I figured if you love something else, I can U-turn out. Otherwise, I can flamethrower the most likely lead, which was the Ferrothorn. Um, and that's exactly what happened. He decides to Thunder Wave me, which... It sucks that it kind of cripples my Choice Scarf, but it's fine because I don't see Hydreigon. I don't see Flygon. Um, I decided to switch to Mew to preserve my Paralyzed Noivern. He decided to switch to... Rotom Heat, which was fine. I knew I could live hits from it. Um, and Scald with the Expert Belt did a ton of damage. At this point, when Sableye comes out, I already know that I'm in for trouble. Um, so I elected to bring Noivern back out. I thought maybe I could um, deal some nice damage to it. With Draco Meteor, unfortunately, I was paralyzed the first turn, essentially allowing it to get a free Calm Mind and a free hit off on me. Um, but I just didn't want to leave Mew in on this Mega Sableye, worrying that Dazzling Gleam wouldn't do nearly enough damage to take it out. So his Sableye is able to take Noivern out. I mean, Noivern really had done its job. It had crippled um, the Ferrothorn and crippled the Rotom between it and Mew. Um, I was lucky enough to get the burn here on Mega Sableye, but unfortunately my low tick can't do much else to Mega Sableye, um, besides sit here and watch it set up Calm Minds. Um, I was hoping that he would switch out, worrying that I might be carrying Dragon Tail and just not dealing with it, but no luck. Um, at this point I was like, oh, well I can just send Skarmory out and Whirlwind and everything will be fine, and this is when we learned collectively as opponents that Whirlwind does not, in fact, work on Magic Bounce. To save everyone the pain of the rest of this match, there's not a whole lot to say. I had no way to phase out this Sableye. Um, I was hoping maybe I could get a free Whirlwind later into my Slurp if I could Whirlwind myself out into Slurp if I not have to worry about um, free switching into it. Um, you see the stealth back there? That was a misclick. I had meant to Whirlwind myself out and I picked the wrong move. I didn't want to be in there anymore. I really wanted to whirlwind myself into a more useful Pokemon. Um, but at this point, I basically knew that the match was over unless Slurpuff could take it out. On um, my first turn, I tried to Destiny Bond with Frostlass, and he elected to recover, probably hope, assuming I was going to Shadow Ball him. 
And so now that he knew that I was going to try Destiny Bond, he was just going to set up the rest of the way. There's no reason not to. Um, I was hoping maybe I could stall him out of other moves that he could use, but uh, realistically it was a game of mind games at the very most until is he going to finally attack this turn or is he just going to let me keep sitting here? Um, it's not exactly a very exciting thing, just repeatedly waiting for him to um, decide to do something else. Um, he has plenty of moves that he could work with. There is no shortage of Will O Wisps protect or Will O Wisps call mines or recovers yet. Um, I figured I could get my free switch into Slurpuff and Player Off missed. In case you're wondering, a 90% accurate move will only miss, and this is a fact, this is not a theory, this is not, no, if it is a fact that a 90% accurate move will only miss when you absolutely need it to hit. Um, but once Play Rough missed, I knew a Shadow Ball would Oko me, and at that point the game was essentially over. Um, I could try to do as much damage as I could, but unless I got a really nice crit dazzling gleam right there with the amount of damage that Sable I had on it, this is, there wasn't much I could do. So as you can see here, I was going to try to do what I could again. Um, I knew at some point he would attack me, probably realizing that even if he lost Mega Sable, I the game was kind of in the bag at this point. Um, for him, my low tip wasn't going to be able to uh, 6-0 his team, even if I managed to get rid of Mega Sable Eye. Um, and, you know, this was basically the lowest damage I got into, was 27%, um, before I was able to recover up after my Scald. Um, these last couple turns just stalling out the Disable from Curse Body, there's really not much else to say about um, what's happening here. Obviously this isn't the most exciting post-commentary, but when you get 6 0 by a Mega Sable, I there's really not a lot to say. Um, you know, sorry that I can't be more exciting, I feel like it's important that I do put this onto the channel so that there is a point of reference for week three, but I mean, <laughs> I got my butt handed to me pretty handily at this point. Um, so yeah, I will be back soon talking about weeks four and five. Um, I have to bulk record a couple of these now because I was pretty busy working and moving the past couple weeks, but you know, I'm, if you sat through the really boring and kind of annoyed that I have to rewatch this a couple times commentary, good on you. Otherwise, um, I hope that you come back soon so we can talk about the rest of the season. Goodbye!